Let's go ahead and go back to where we left off. We left off on very early this morning, own the morning, win the day. I'm going to share with you now the schedule to sell 100 homes in 2024. All right, so this is the new and improved or whatever you want to call it. It is based on um, my personal production, the production of our coaching clients. I have several coaching clients of my own that, that are at or above that personal level, and this is the schedule that we're sharing. Now, here's the deal. I understand when I share this, I'm going to lose about 20% of the audience because 20% of the audience is either going to say, I don't want to sell 100 homes a year or I don't need to sell 100 homes a year. So the good news is, regardless of where you're at, I've got a plan for 50, all right, I'll share with you that. And once I'm done with this, we're gonna talk pricing, price reductions, and we're gonna share with you uh, a new program that you can take advantage of that isn't, potentially doesn't cost you a dime, um, and that's the 75 hard program that we're gonna help hold you accountable to. So let's talk about the new daily routine. Again, this is not for the faint of heart, all right? So I'm putting this disclaimer out there. This is to sell 100 homes annually. I wrote down at the top, first of all, this is a Monday through Friday schedule plus 30 Saturday mornings. This is a Monday through Friday schedule plus 30 Saturday mornings. Now, you might still work Saturday afternoon or go on an open house on Sunday. That's, that's fine. That would be on top of this. This is a Monday through Friday schedule plus 30 Saturday mornings. All right? This is, watch. If I was just listing and selling real estate today, no Glover U, no, no, no brokerages, none of that. This is the exact schedule that I'm following. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you take everything away and just drop me back into full-time production, where that's all I'm doing, this is the schedule. This is my schedule. So, that's, by the way, it's, it's not extreme. There are some extreme things to it, but... In terms of wake and get ready, I have it set for 6 a.m. So go ahead and write down 6 a.m., wake and get ready. 6 a.m., wake and get ready. Now, wake and get ready could mean a lot of things, right? Um, you may be spending time with your family, having breakfast with them. You may be spending time with a spouse or significant other. Whatever wake and get ready means to you. 7 a.m., I'm leaving for the office. If I want to sell 100 houses in 2024, I'm leaving at 7 a.m., all right, there's a reason why there's only a handful of agents in the country that sell, or I'm sorry, a handful of agents in your market that sell over 100 houses a year. Because leaving at 7 a.m. does not sound like a good reason for why I got into this business. But if you want to sell 100 houses, it's required. I wrote down, leave, leave for the office at 7 a.m. and role play during my commute. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to have hands free on, whatever, and I'm going to role play with someone around the country. I'm going to have a role play partner five days a week. Every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday, I'm going to have a different role play partner. Number seven, or at 7.30, I'm going to arrive at the office. So underneath that, 7.30, arrive at the office. And I'm either going to have an accountability call with someone else or on that role play call, we're going to finish with a daily accountability. All right, I'm committing to 25 contacts. I'm going to work out once today. I'm going to set one appointment. I'm going to go on one. I'm going to put one person in the database. All right, good. Johnny, what's your goals? Once a day, I'm going to finish with accountability at the end of my role play. At seven, and it's going to take five minutes. At 740, I'm preparing my contacts for the day. At 740, I'm preparing my contacts for the day. By the way, when I look at the schedule, there's really not a whole lot that's changed from when I was just listing and selling real estate. At 7.59, I'm going to assume the position. Just write it down. 7.59, I'm going to assume the position. Just write it down. So what does assume the position mean? It means I've got my laptop here in front of me. Which reminds me, when we do the price uh, reduction, can someone bring my laptop up here, please? I don't need it right now, but just when, when our guests come up on stage. I'm going to have my laptop in front of me. I'm going to have my headset on. And it's 7.59. I've got, I've had, what, 29 minutes, or I'm sorry, 19 minutes to prepare my dials. I've got everything lined up, ready to go. And I've got my hand on my mouse, ready to do what? Start my dialer. 7.59, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8 o'clock, go. 
That is what starting to prospect at 8 a.m. looks like. You assume the position at 7.59 and at 8 o'clock you hit start. Or at 8 o'clock you start dialing. That's what I mean by assume the position. You're not starting at 8.05, you're already late. I already got one on you. I already set an appointment. You're gonna call them after I spoke to them and I already have an appointment. 7.59, you assume the position. At 8 a.m., you start your dial session. You start your dial session. And if you're in the United States, you're gonna start with expireds at 8 o'clock. If you're in Canada, you're gonna canvas around the expireds so that way you don't break any laws. At 9 o'clock, I'm gonna to switch to for sale by owners and internet leads. By the way, Jeff, we only have like seven expireds a day in my market. What do you, how do I do that? Okay, watch. Let's just pretend I'm manually dialing. No dialers here. I've got my stack of leads that I'm calling that have been printed out. It's eight o'clock, ready? No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. Bad number, bad number. Lead, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. Bad number, appointment set. No answer, okay? It's now 8.22, ready? No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. Leave me alone! Bad number, no answer. Lead, it's now 8.47. No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. Answer, go kick rocks. No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. It's now 8.59, mindset break. All right, my expires are done for the day. That's, by the way, what intense prospecting for one hour looks like. No breaks, nonstop. You didn't reach them at 8.07, I try them again at 8.27. I didn't reach them at 8.27, I try them again at 8.47. Two to three times that first hour. So now, nine o'clock, I switch to for sale by owners or internet leads. For sale by owners or internet leads. And the reason why I say internet leads is because I know there's a lot of you in here that work them at a high level, and there's probably some that came in from overnight or from the previous day or even in that moment, I wanna make sure you get to them. 9.30 a.m. I'm taking my first mindset break. So I have 90 minutes of straight prospecting before I take my mindset break. It's a 15 minute mindset break and then at 9.45, I go into either database or hybrid farming, which we'll be talking about both at a high level tomorrow. We're gonna share our latest and greatest Database value proposition plan. I'm gonna share with you what we're doing to hybrid farm. You heard Stephanie on stage yesterday talk about hybrid farming, which she learned in Sales Rocket is her number one source of business. We're gonna cover those two sources tomorrow. 9.45, I'm working those two sources, all right? 10.30, I switch to lead follow-up. No point in prospecting if I'm not gonna schedule time to follow up every single day. 10.30, I lead follow-up. 30 minutes is all I need, because it's intense. By the way, well, let me just finish the schedule. I'll share that point in a second. Uh, 11 a.m., 11 a.m., I go into content creation. This is today's schedule to get to 100 units. Content creation. And I don't mean taking out my phone and opening up Facebook or Instagram. That's, con that's called content consumption. All right? Hopefully in 2024, you set a New Year's resolution. Spend less time consuming and more time creating. So what do I mean by content creation at 11 a.m.? What I mean, I wrote down, I'm writing the actual copy or at least an outline of my social media post for later that day. I'm spending 30 minutes in critical thinking of thinking about what my post is going to be, my video, my, co my content, my copy, 30 minutes of creating content while my energy is high your creativity is higher in the morning. Everything is better in the morning as it ter in terms of critical thinking. So I'm gonna do that at 11.30. 11.30 a.m., I go through what's called acknowledgements. Acknowledgements. 
and acknowledgements, I'm gonna spend 20 to 30 minutes reaching out to every single person who reached out to me that morning or the night before. All right, you guys have heard me say for years, no admin in the morning, you heard it this morning, no admin in the morning. I mean, you heard a little bit of it from Damon John, nothing that's gonna throw off his mindset in the morning. Admin work or talking to co-op agents will definitely throw off your mindset in the morning. So at 11.30, I go through every single missed call and I don't jump into solving problems. I let them know that I got their message. I shoot them a text or send them an email or return their call. Hey, I just want to let you know I got your message. I understand there's an issue. I'm going to be back in touch with you after lunch. And I solve that problem after lunch. I don't dive into any problem solving of administration or operations in the mornings. I have a tough schedule. I have a tough enough schedule as it is. At noon, I'm taking a two hour break. Now, it could be a healthy lunch, it could be a workout plus a healthy lunch, or it could be time with your family. Depending on whether you work from home or you if you live close to home, I'm taking a two hour break. Why? Well, because first of all, I left super early in the morning and I didn't get my workout in yet. So I need to get it in somewhere and it's probably not gonna happen. If you follow this schedule and you sell 100 houses a year, unless you're doing some illegal substances, you won't have the energy to work out at night, okay? So I have to get it in while I have the energy to do so. And because I'm starting my, my work routine at seven, essentially 7 a.m. is my first role play call, I'd have to work out at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Now, some of you are like, yeah, whatever. What's the problem with 4.30 or 5 o'clock? All right. I, I like my sleep, too. So I'm going to choose to work out at lunchtime instead. Next, I wrote down from 2 to 4. That's when I'm doing my administration and my social media. Two to four is administration and social media, closings, walkthroughs, inspections, paperwork, actually posting, actually maybe, maybe ca capturing some of the content perhaps. Now there's another part where you might capture some footage as well, you'll hear in a second. But this is where I'm actually going to administer the post, administer the reel, administer the story. I'm putting the administration of social media uh, or what Alana suggested maybe you leverage out to Live Unreal Media or another company. There's every, every market's got one. I'm putting that in my afternoon because I consider that admin work, but it has to happen just like admin work has to happen. So it's got to go in my schedule or it ain't going to happen. If I don't put it in my schedule, I'm not going to remember to do it. So I have to think of this. Moving forward, I want you to change your thought process from content creation is lead generation, and that's why it went in the morning. However, content execution is administration, and that's why that's in the afternoon. Do you see the difference? Say yes. yes. From four to, five, 4 to 5.30, again, this schedule is not for the faint of heart. For 4 to 5.30, if I want to sell 100 homes in 2024, I'm going to door knock if I have no appointments to go on. And I have in parentheses, capture footage. There's going to be so many crazy things you experience when you door knock, houses that you walk by that look weird. You leave a front porch, ah, oh, that was weird, that homeowner. Hey, whenever you're looking for a tough agent, I just got beat up on that porch. Whenever you're, you're looking for a tough agent, I'm your guy. <laughs> Capture the footage while it's fresh in your mind. 5.30 to 7 is I'm going on appointments I'm cap and I'm capturing footage. I leave an appointment, I take a listing. I mean, you guys see me do it from time to time. I get in the car, I post a little selfie with contracts. And then after that, after 7 o'clock, after 7 p.m., that's time with family. Also, don't forget to post to social media or hire that out if you haven't done that yet. In other words, well, Jeff, I had a busy afternoon. You know, I had a couple closings, so I couldn't do all my posting. I couldn't do all my admin work. Okay, but you have to do it every single day. So when am I going to do it? Well, you better not do it in your morning because it's going to throw you off. I can't, I don't wait until tomorrow morning to do it. It's going to throw off your entire schedule. You're going to have to do it from home. You're going to have to enjoy your dinner, enjoy your time with family, enjoy as much as you can. And then at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, at some point in time, from the time you get home until the time you fall asleep, you're going to have to do it then. If you weren't able to do it during your admin time. That's my Monday through Friday schedule. My Saturday schedule, Saturday morning, 30 Saturday mornings, looks like this. Really no different than what my Saturday morning looks like on the days I'm in production. Of course, now today... Some Saturdays I'm in production, some Saturdays I'm preparing for Glover U stuff, some Saturdays I'm taking off. But if I'm selling 100 homes next year, then I'm, a, I'm waking and getting ready at 7 a.m. on Saturday. I'm sleeping in for one hour. I'm giving myself one hour of grace. Wake and get ready at 7 a.m. 
At 8 a.m., I leave for the office. At 8.40, I prepare my contacts. 8 a.m., I leave for the office. At 8.40, I prepare my contacts. At 8.59 a.m., I assume the position. Assume the position. At 9 o'clock, I start my dial session. At 9 o'clock, I start my dial session. And I'm calling in the U.S. expireds. In Canada, I'm canvassing around the neighborhood of expireds and just so happening to land on one. At 10 a.m., I'm switching to for sale by owners or internet leads. So essentially, everything's like an hour later on the Saturday morning. At 10.30 a.m., I'm taking my mindset break. 10.30 a.m., mindset break. 10.45, I'm jumping back into prospecting and I'm working my database or I'm doing hybrid farming. Again, both of those two we'll, call, we'll cover tomorrow. If you're wondering, well, what kind of context do you make to those two, Jeff? We'll cover that tomorrow. At 11.30 a.m., I do my lead follow-up for 30 minutes. I go through every single person that I tried to touch base with this week that I wasn't able to get in touch with or people that I know I owe a call back to. At noon, I prepare for my afternoon appointments and have a healthy lunch. And for me, I've got a 1.30, a 2.30, a 3.30, and then I'm done for the weekend. A 1.30, a 2.30, a 3.30, and then I'm done for the weekend. A 1.30, a 2.30, a 3.30, and then I'm done for the weekend. Meaning, I am close, you know, when I'm done on that last appointment, it's 4.30 or 5 o'clock on a Saturday, I'm closed until Monday, first thing Monday morning. No calls, no texts, no emails. Well, Jeff, what happens if like an offer expires? I lost the sale. Why? Because I'm gonna gain 100 more by following this. So I understand I may lose a client from time to time because I'm very disciplined with my schedule, but I can't be disciplined with my schedule if I don't get the ample time off and rest. If you wanna sell 100 houses next year, there's your schedule. Now, my question is, who's willing to take me up on it? So here's the deal. By the way, you've heard of the 80-20 rule. Okay, you've heard of the 80-20 rule. Um, there's a reason why there's only a handful of agents in each market who are selling over 100 houses per year. Now, if you don't desire to sell over 100 houses a year, then I don't expect you to raise your hand and I'm not going to hold that against you. We're not going to say, oh, I can't believe you didn't raise your hand. Jeff probably saw that. I don't care. You all have different whys and different reasons why you're doing what you're doing. And I believe it's my job since I'm do I've done it and I'm doing it with you. I got to share with you what it's going to take. So for those of you that raised your hands and those of you that did not, you're going to hear in a minute after we do the price reduction segment, an opportunity how to increase your level of accountability to help you stick to the schedule. And that's going to be with a 75 hard opportunity, which isn't going to cost you a dime. And you'll hear how that is. Now, if you wanted some initial help with this, one of my recommendations would be is you create some extreme level of accountability so that it's painful if you don't stick to that. You, it hurts. All right. I have a couple coaching clients right now uh, in the room. Connor and Asher, where are you guys at? Okay, Connor's right here. Asher, where's Asher at? Asher's right there. Connor, what time do you have to be in in the morning? 7.30. 7.30, and if you're not in, what do you have to do? Well, I sent you a photo, and if it's not 7.30, then you send a $250 check to... To who? Ryan Borman, who's in my market. Okay, let me repeat what he said. <laughs> I have to send you a photo of my laptop and the office in the background, because you can manipulate all this stuff, okay? <laughs> A photo, office in the background, and, and actually I want the, the date and time listed in there too. Okay, and if he's not in by 7.30 in 2024, because your goal is to sell how many houses this year? 100. How many did you sold last year? 52. So you're going to double, and I believe you're going to do it, because you're following this schedule, by the way. If he's not in, if he doesn't do that five days a week, he's already sent them to me. I have an envelope with, two, with five $250 checks written out to his biggest competitor in his market. 
And you know what he said to me yesterday? He said, Jeff, it wasn't the 250. He said, that is absolutely going to be painful, no doubt. What's going to be painful is having to call this agent that I've been like this with and explain why I'm paying them. Asher, we got the same deal, right, buddy? Yeah, we do. How many homes will you sell this year? 120. And what are you going to do next year? I'm sorry, how, do, how many homes did you sell last year? 77. 77, you'll sell how many this year? 120. 120. And these are guys that are already performing at a high level. But sometimes we need that extra level of accountability, don't we? Will it be painful if your biggest competitor gets a check from you, Asher? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so what kind of extremes do you have to, by the way, let's hear it for those two gentlemen. So what kind of extremes do we have to put in place to where it hurts that bad if we don't do it? All right, you already heard my story from yesterday. 